Greetings and welcome to this episode of The Briefing on International Relations, Geopolitics and World Affairs. This time, we'll be examining the conflict in Ukraine and Zelensky's calls for a peace conference in Switzerland. Calls for a peace plan have been sparked by the situation where Russia's bully conflict is turning the tide against Ukraine and her NATO allies. Together, let's find out in the analysis that follows. Now, let's get going. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky requested on Monday, January 15, that Switzerland hold a peace summit with international leaders to discuss halting Russia's full-scale invasion, but Moscow was not invited. Prior to departing for Davos, Switzerland, for the annual gathering of the World Economic Forum, Zelensky met with Swiss President Viola Amherd in Bern. Following the discussions, Zelensky said at a news conference, our teams are starting the preparation for holding in Switzerland a global peace summit tomorrow. He claimed that those attending the conference would be at the level of leaders. Everything that has been accomplished thus far must be revitalized by this summit, which will also decide that the war must end in a way that is incredibly just and that the application of international law must be fully restored. The Russian conflict in Ukraine started two years ago in February and in the last few weeks, Moscow has increased the frequency of its airstrikes against the country. Zelensky responded, We are open to all countries of the world that respect our sovereignty and territorial integrity, when asked if Russia will be invited to the summit. You can therefore infer who we invite based on this information. He continued, We would want China to be involved, and we would want the countries of the global south to be present. According to Zelensky, it is critical that leaders attend the summit. It is crucial that we demonstrate that everyone is against Russia's aggressiveness and in favor of a decent peace. There was no indication of when the summit might take place. To be effective, Amhad stated, we would like to have a widely supported summit with as many countries as possible participating. We will work together to organize that once the time comes when we can see that we can hold a successful summit. The decision to convene a peace summit follows a fourth round of discussions on Ukraine's peace formula that national security advisers from 83 nations convened on Sunday in Davos. In addition to announcing that a high-level conference on the difficulties of humanitarian demony in Ukraine would take place in Geneva in October, Anhard stated that demoning was essential for recovery and reconstruction. In order for displaced people to safely return to their homes and for agricultural land to be cultivated, humanitarian mine clearance is a prerequisite, the speaker stated. In addition to claiming that unexploded bombs and Russian mines damaged 174,000 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory, Zelensky also suggested that an international conference may be conducted in the months leading up to the Geneva Conference. Switzerland has maintained its long-standing military neutrality with a strong arsenal. It has declined to transfer weapons to Kiev or let nations possessing weapons made in Switzerland to export them back to Ukraine. However, it has matched the economic penalties imposed by the European Union on Russia as a result of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Zelensky called the situation involving Russian financial assets that have been frozen in many nations urgent. Defending against Russian aggression with the resources of Russia and its allies is not only a justifiable, but also an effective way to punish the aggressor, he declared. The person who initiated this war ought to bear the greatest consequences for it. However, before we go any further, kindly support this channel by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. This will allow YouTube to recognize your preferences and allow you to receive new video updates as soon as they are released on this channel. I'm grateful. Now let's move forward. Using frozen Russian assets would be a simple way for Kyiv to get money, according to the U.S. Special Envoy for Ukraine's Economic Recovery, who stated on Monday that the G7 as a whole would need to approve the move first. Speaking off the sidelines of the Davos summit was Penny Pritzker. In order to finance its rehabilitation, Ukraine has pressed for the West to take control of $300 billion in frozen Russian assets. But according to the G7, any confiscation is likely to run afoul of the law. According to diplomats, Europeans are opposed to the idea because they think Russia and other major powers won't trust the West to handle their money safely. Despite this, 
the United States supports the plan. The foundation of Ukrainian businessman Viktor Pinchuk and Asset Management Horizon Capital are among the organizers of the Ukraine House, where Pritzker stated, I think there's enormous hope that the Russian sovereign assets could become an easy source of financing. She claimed that ministers had been requested by the affluent Group of Seven to investigate whether using Russian assets for Ukraine is possible. Everything about it is quite intricate. And the first thing you find out is that a great deal of legal expertise is required, Pritzker stated. It is necessary to have a legal theory, legislation, and a choice regarding the process as supervisor. She stated that a collective decision needed to be made and that the US would not act alone. We're far from a conclusion, but there is real work being done, real effort being made, she stated. During the same discussion, Pierre Heilbrunn, the envoy of French President Emmanuel Macron for Ukraine rebuilding, pointed out that the majority of Russia's estimated $300 billion in assets are located in Europe. Heilbrunn stated, in essence, we're very clear about the fact that there should be a G7 more or less common position on that. According to a senior Ukrainian official on Sunday, Ukraine and its allies may invite Russia to a future peace conference to talk about ending Moscow's two-year incursion on Kyiv's terms. A summit in Switzerland will address President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine's vision for peace, which he may present to Russia at a later meeting. Chief of Staff of the President Andriy Yermak stated, there may be an occasion where we bring Russian Federation representatives together. They will be given the plan in the event that the aggressor nation at the time wishes to actually put an end to this war and return to a just peace. At the G20 summit in November 2022, Mr. Zelensky first unveiled his peace proposal, which asks for the complete departure of Russian soldiers and the restoration of Ukraine's territorial integrity. Kiev has insisted that until all Russian forces have evacuated Ukrainian soil, it will not communicate with Moscow. According to the Kremlin, Kyiv's peace plan was ridiculous as it did not include Russia, and there is now no basis for peace negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukraine's Minister of Defense stated on Sunday that only half of the promised aid from the West reaches the nation on schedule. According to Rustin Numerov, every day that an assistance shipment is delayed results in personnel casualties for Ukraine and highlights Russia's military might. We turn our attention to the enemy. Their economy is nearly $2 trillion, and they spend up to 15% of the official and unofficial budget, funds for the war, totaling more than $100 billion a year in US dollars. In other words, we lose people and territory if a commitment isn't kept. The fallout from the February 20 shelling of Donetsk's downtown Ukraine. Numerous people were hurt, and one woman died. Ukraine is hopeful that Switzerland will host a peace conference as early as this spring. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, a peace plan would be drafted in collaboration with Ukraine's allies and presented to Russia. On the second anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Zelensky stated in a press conference held in Kyiv that his nation must maintain its diplomatic initiative. Just this past Friday, at the UN headquarters in New York, Swiss Foreign Minister Ignazio Cassis declared his country's intention to host a high-level peace conference by the summer. He stated that this meeting should serve as an introduction and start a process, emphasizing the need for representation from a wide range of states, including those from outside of Europe, the US and Canada. A peace summit on Ukraine is planned by Switzerland by the summer. We will establish a framework on which Russian President Vladimir Putin can acknowledge that he lost this war and that it was a major error and a tragedy for us and for the democratic world, Zelensky declared in Kyiv. Zelensky stressed that Ukraine cannot afford to lose the battle with Russia since that would imply the country's dissolution. But the Russian president has this exact objective in mind. The greatest geopolitical disaster of the 20th century, in his opinion, was the fall of the Soviet Union, to which Ukraine once belonged. Putin argues that Belarusians, Russians and Ukrainians constitute a unified East Slavic nation. So he denies Ukraine the right to exist as an independent state. In response, the West seeks to hurt Russia by tying Ukraine to the EU and NATO in an attempt to seize control of the country. 
Putin gave the order for Russia to militarily invade its southern neighbour, Ukraine at dawn on February 24, 2022. In contrast to Russian predictions, Zelensky and his government were not overthrown where the majority of the nation was not taken over, nor was the capital city of Kiev conquered in a matter of days. Rather, half of the seized lands of Ukraine were liberated from Russian soldiers. What are your thoughts? Is Ukraine moving towards peace now that the war effort is failing? Please share your thoughts in the space provided for comments below. And with that, we conclude for the time being. I appreciate you watching. See you in the next video.